Hi, we are the Delo Industry Days 2025 in Copenhagen, Denmark, and I am very pleased to meet again with Hans Schneider. He is the CEO of the Danish Navy Vessel Consortium. Hans, uh, good day, great to see you again. Thank you very much, and same to you in, the, in this big mess once again. Indeed. So the last time uh, we met, you were at the head of the patrol ship consortium. Now your name has changed to Danish Navy Vessel Consortium. And actually there's a lot going on because uh, last year you were still working on the patrol ship for the Baltic. And this is a patrol ship for the Arctic. So let us know what happened and let us know what that means for your consortium. Yes, I mean, the first uh, step was that uh, the Danish government decided that they uh, wanted more focus uh, on the Arctic uh, waters um, uh, compared to, uh, to their needs in the Baltics. Uh, they decided that we could get uh, support from our, our NATO allies in Sweden and, and, and Finland to cover the Baltics, so we need to focus on the Arctic. So they requested the consortium to um, to turn the project and to uh, utilize the you can say the platform we had, but to utilize that in order to um, to achieve a new generation of Arctic patrol vessels, which uh, eventually is going to replace the the quite famous uh, Tichys class uh, we have uh, in the North Atlantic at the moment. So that was the the first step in uh, in that process. Uh, the second is that, um, uh, looking at that, the consortium also had the, the inspiration uh, or the as, uh, aspiration for actually uh, using uh, this as a platform to moving into larger uh, class vessels like uh, frigates. And uh, therefore, to, to, um, to show that um, aspirations, we have changed our name, so we now cover a more broad range of uh, Navy vessels. So uh, this model 3D printed shows the new or latest design for the Arctic patrol ship. The, were you able to keep some kind of commonality between the Baltic patrol ship and the new Arctic patrol ship? Because the designs to me look somewhat similar, except this one is slightly bigger, of course. Yes, um, of course. Um one of the strong drivers in doing an Arctic design is that the ship should be capable to actually not only sail in ice but also to break ice. So that has had some quite uh, um, quite significant influence on the underwater, underwater lines. But the communality and the concept of building a modular uh, military or warship uh, is uh, quite the same as we have uh, approached on the um, on the Baltic patrol vessels. So the whole setup of the mission bay in the aft part of the vessel, and how we approach the uh, the build up of um, of the sections of the vessels is uh, very familiar to uh, the work we have already done in the uh, in the Baltic patrol vessels. Can you share with us some of the specifications of this uh, Arctic vessel? Yes, as you know, with all Navy vessels, there's a limit to how much I can say. But of course, um, it is a it's a it's a highly capable um, North Atlantic um, uh, military vessels. It has quite um, a, a quite heavy um, sensor suite because that's the main task of the vessel is to be um, uh, the eyes and ears of uh, of the Navy in the in the North Atlantic and. Um, uh, in order to support uh, the, uh, the operation up there, there's, um, uh, it's, it's not easy to see, but it has a fully um, organic helicopter uh, um, available um, uh, for service. Uh, it has a quite uh, significant um, ice-breaking uh, capacity, uh, up to uh, uh, one uh, meter of, uh, of old ice and, and, and one and a half meter of, uh, of new ice, which is quite significant for um, a vessel of this size. It also has, uh, um, I cannot say the number, but it has a, a relatively high speed because uh, the distances in the, in the Greenland um, uh, area is very long, so it has to be uh, quite fast. And therefore we have also increased, uh, of course, the, um, the, uh, the power uh, needed for, for, pushing, uh, for pushing the vessel. So uh, that's, uh, that you can say is, um, is the main capabilities. Then uh, there has been a very uh, high emphasis on uh, long duration. These vessels can actually operate for several months without any complementary uh, um, uh, overtime. 
for up to 80 people. So it's, uh, uh, there's, there's been a lot of focus in utilizing the vessel uh, to, uh, to support that. The mission deck is, uh, of course, it's a modular mission deck, so it has uh, many features. But you can say the main, um, or one of the main uh, drivers here is to support um, surveillance equipment, uh, or sensor equipment, but also uh, to support the special forces uh, we have operating up in, uh, in the north part of, um, of Greenland. What is the approximate uh, land? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, just uh, short of uh, overall of 120 meters. Yes. So it's, uh, it's about, um, it's about 10, 12 meters longer than the, uh, the Baltic uh, patrol vessel. Yeah. And, then, and uh, lastly, uh, Hans, what's the, the timeline for this uh, project or program? The, the program is still that we should uh, be able to deliver uh, the first vessel in uh, third quarter 29. And uh, the building pace is uh, one vessel per year. And uh, the government has, uh, has concluded um, the first three vessels, but, uh, but there is uh, discussions ongoing if they need more to, uh, to cover the operation, but that has not been decided yet. All right. Thank you very much, Hans, for this update. You're welcome. Thank you very much.